Hello, viewers. I am Ivy the Android. I'd like to share today's dinosaur forecast. A dinosaur outbreak will soon occur. Residents in the affected area have been evacuated, and a team of exo-fighters has been dispatched. A vortex warning has been issued. Please remain indoors. I make a sense of this situation. You've been living fighting with the Chief Directors for two years. All I wanted was to be IBS's top pilot. IBS's latest dinosaur forecasts and XOC technology were able to keep human casualties to zero. XOC development is proceeding under the guidance of the next Jet AI, Leviathan. Meanwhile, IBS continues to recruit candidates to become new exo-fighters. Humanity's greatest hope. Another Exo Fighter recruit, right? Welcome to IBS. Hey folks, this is a Menu Heroes Digest Shorts by me, Jordan the co-host. And I am just doing, you know, my first reactions to the many PlayStation State of Play trailers that, uh, yes, I know, were six days ago, but I'm on vacation, so. You know, I'm, I'm being relaxed here, I'm taking it easy, and I'm rea reacting to these different trailers one by one. And the first one I started off with was Exo Primal. Let me tell you. As a big Dino Crisis fan, I mean, that was one of the first games I played as a kid and everything. You know, it's dinosaurs, so obviously I gravitated towards that. And uh, how Capcom has treated this franchise. I immediately had both optimism and pessimism seeing this trailer. Of course, I've already seen some reactions saying like, well, this is it, folks. Dino Crisis is dead, you know, just by seeing this. And I, I don't want to say that immediately, or I don't, I don't also don't want to say there's a chance this could be a spin-off of Dino Crisis. But, well, I mean, the game starts off, like, the trailer, I mean, starts off with, you know, this interdimensional portal opening up and ways of dinosaurs coming out. That's, well, not exactly how the Dino Crisis games went, but it, it's close enough. And they could always link it up. But um, this isn't exactly a horror game. <laughs> yeah, it's not even a horror action game. This is purely somebody said, "Hey, Dino Crisis, let's make Overwatch and Anthem out of that." And I, I and that that last part one, Anthem, that I think is what get a lot of people worried. I love dinosaurs so much that even though the last Jurassic World movie wasn't great, I'm still very looking forward to that movie. The trailer looked awesome, and I'm gonna be optimistic for this one. Though I gotta say, they had a redheaded female character in the trailer. And you know someone at Capcom was like, you know, they'll all be guessing if that's Regina, they'll all be thinking that's her or her daughter or something. We'll really get him. We'll get those Dino Crisis guests. We've ruined their lives already with Dino Crisis 3. Why don't we mess with their minds again? <laughs>
Critical work. People always decry the truth when forced to face it. Still your fear. I will be her salvation. Mari! Mari! The time is nigh. The world rests on the precipice of transformation. A new age will dawn! Once again, Ghostwire Tokyo! Woo! Okay, okay, seriously though, we are close to the home stretch for this game. And I am looking forward to it. I will admit, uh, back in 2019, I had certain different expectations for it. It had a very different feel to it than before. And, you know, from what I'm seeing right now, it's definitely much more action-oriented. Certainly has vibes of, like, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen and giving me kind of a Shadows of the Damned vibes, somewhat. Only because, like, you know, Shinji Mikami is also involved with this as well. But, um, you know, there are certainly are a lot of behind the scenes that happened with a lot of drama that happened behind the scenes with the Shadows of the Damned back. Shinji Mikami was over at EA. So I don't think it's going to be the same thing with uh, Tango Gameworks is doing this one. But the original creative head uh, for Ghostwire Tokyo. Ikumi Yakamura ha was let go uh, just a couple of years ago, but it wasn't anything serious, nothing, either by her or by the studio. It was simply because she uh, was rather sick or her health was not, she was not in, health, in healthy condition to continue on. I also want this little short to be not only a reaction to Ghostwire Tokyo, because I don't know so many, but also uh, covering a small little story about uh, Miss Nakamura starring her own uh, game game company, Unseen. Well, it's a little game developer studio anyway. She decided that rather than have a company where games get made, she realized that she would have to, of having a studio where artists get together and have fun making games together, where they can be creative and everything. So I wish her the best of, best of luck. She had such wonderful energy back in 2019 when she first was involved with this game, and I wish her and the team best of luck. And of course, I think Ghostbiker Tokyo could be good, but, uh, you know, I was hoping more scares than action for this one, that's all. <laughs> Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Just a game that's coming out pretty soon. Uh, coming out the fact. Both this and Ghostwire Tokyo are coming out the exact same day, March 25th. I, I could be completely wrong, but um, as I said, this is just simply showing off some of the special abilities and classic Final Fantasy monsters that you know and love and everything. Don't ask me the names of everything. It's been a while since I played Final Fantasy. I love it, man. And uh, some of the games were uh, on sale on the tent. Nintendo Switch, which this game will not appear on. Who's to say whenever it'll appear on others? As I said, there's not a whole lot else covering, so. It is quite beautiful. Yeah, in a everything here wants to kill you kind of way.
over the world. Let's finish this. For Spoken, and we're probably gonna cover it again because it's been, it's been moved from its May release date to October 11th. So you're gonna hear me talk about the game once again later. But in all seriousness, folks, um, I'm honestly gelling with this. Uh, I'm you know with this For Spoken game and all of its trailers. I think even though. The Isekai genre has really, really overstayed its welcome with so many bland anime and games based around it. I feel like Forspoken is, at the very least, offering a main character that has personality and has snark and emotions, you know, just making her leagues above plenty of Isekai main characters that are just planks of wood with a cutout of a person's face, maybe. And this trailer was just purely, here's all the cool abilities you'll do and all the cool monsters you'll face. Which, uh, yeah, we're seeing a bunch of that in this in this uh, state of play coverage. But as I said, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing with Forspoken. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> On the one hand, we're getting Gundam games again, and also there's giant mech games coming out, well, with the Front Mission remakes coming out, and also the trailer for Capcom's Exo Primal just released. But this trailer to me gave off such Fortnite vibes, and I have no problem with Fortnite, not at all. But certainly, this comes off as an executive team looking at Gundam and thinking like, yeah, the West ain't gonna really get that. You know, we, the, we how we can sell this to Westerners? Make it like Fortnite. And just the music and just how it's framed and everything. I'm just lucky that there are plenty of Gundams from different eras and series throughout the decades. And you can use some with a chain with a mace in the end and you know, lances, I, you know, that to me is a uh, very essential Gundam. It ain't just the the mechs with the guns and the laser swords. There's a few uh, weirder weapons in the history of Gundam that, uh, you know, I appreciate them adding more to this. And uh, as I said, this was just an announcement for the, this is going to be available for PS4 and PS5 because last year they announced this and it was supposedly just going to be for PC. But um, I want to be hopeful because it is Gundam. And I think we need more Gundam in the world. Really, no, we're, we're about to, we're closer, closer to World War III. We don't need giant mechs to make it worse, but hey, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to see Gundam. <laughs>
this one really hits me right home with some classic TMNT games, man. This is the Cowabunga Collection. So, strap in because I'm going to name all the games that were shown and are going to be available in the collection. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project, a gr uh, one of my favorites. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, Super Nintendo, also a classic. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, Super Nintendo. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Hyperstone High, Sega Genesis. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, Sega Genesis, I love that one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan, Game Boy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Back to the Sewers, Game Boy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Radical Rescue. Y'all, you're gonna be suffering from shell shock with all these games coming right at you. I am, uh, this is, I am just so excited for this! Yes! Alright, Konami, we've had our differences, and I hate what you've been doing to your, your franchises, and I know you probably have NFTs of these games already, and I'm making myself mad just saying this right now, but I'm happy you gave a Castlevania collection, and I'm happy you're giving out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game collections as well. So... I guess we'll we'll leave it at that. And turtles fight with honor. Nobody else is really talking about Giga Blast. You know, this is a big giant monster brawler that, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if it's MMO, if it's, you know, online, if it's free to play. It just, it's really only showing off like a couple monsters or like one monster, like a weird combination of Godzilla and Megalon, which that should not be because they are mortal enemies. You know, there was a whole movie where Godzilla and Jet Jaguar worked together to defeat Megalon from the underground society that was trying to take over the surface. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, somebody over at Patch Republic Games had, did not do their homework, I see. Very much to say. <laughs> so... <laughs> ここで決着をつける。行くぞ。協力してよ。ほら、ほら、スタッフ So, here we have a remaster of the 2013 PS3's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R that's going to be, you know, available for PS5, PS4, and Xbox Series X, and also available for Switch as well, and Steam. Good on ya, and uh, I, I wish I could say that it's very nostalgic for me, but I was pretty late getting into JoJo's. It was like, they they were uh, halfway through freaking Golden Wind was like, like when I officially started JoJo's, so I was very behind, and I had no idea what any of the memes were like back in 2013, 2014, and all that stuff, when it was... The show was really popular. Actually, I think it was 2015 when the show was really popular. Uh, this is a classic anime fighting game that many love. Obviously, JoJo fans love this. and uh, But even like uh, 
just people who love anime based fighting games they, they say this is up there with one of the best so I'm looking forward to finally playing this it does make sense for them to do some more JoJo games or at least remasters of JoJo games now that like Stone Ocean's available on Netflix and uh, they finally wrapped up all the stuff that was going on in JoJo Lion which is a storyline going on for 12 years now um, good time to be a JoJo fan and uh <laughs> おそれの主とは我の This might be my favorite trailer so far. You know, we've covered nostalgia and remakes and everything. Trek to Yomi by Studio Flying Hog. Man, this this looks like a classic Kurosawa film brought to life in a video game form. I mean, this looks to be like a cool, moody, side-scroller, hack-and-slash, man. It's just uh, already, like, the, the cinematography is looking phenomenal on this. I am really pumped for this. Coming in, not just for the... PS consoles, but also it's going to be available on Steam as well. So I, man, if it's if it's coming out in spring, man, I, I want to try my best to get this as soon as possible. I know plenty of games I've been saying I want to get, I haven't got a chance to play. But Trek to Yomi, this looks phenomenal. I am. We'll wait and see how this turns out. I I certainly hope this is leagues above Tai Shogun Rise of the Emperor because. I, I wasted good money on that crap. Please, Trek to Yomi, please don't be that. <laughs>
ステーション This is gonna sound real mean, but I'm starting to feel like the main character in Returnal. I, okay, there there is a couple of things in this display that I thought was nice, but uh, and look, I, I as anybody am saddened by the fact that I have not played the the game Returnal. I love Metroidvanias. I can't. I keep talking about how great Metroid is and how great Castlevania is. And you would think this would be the game I would have jumped right onto and play. Well, I would have if my PS4 started worked again. I'd love to get into this new survival mode, Tower of Sisyphus, and some uh, campaign co-op stuff, you know, and new updates. This all looks pretty good. The game looks great. Yeah, and, and just, uh, I, I swear, one day, one of these days, the PS4 will work, and I'll play some of these great games, and I'll play this update. Is this really what you want? And you are certain that what we are doing is best for the people of the kingdom? Yes. I suppose it would, in a sense. True. Oh, yes. It made me wonder, am I still that same person? The era of myths gives way to an era of great turmoil. The continent was ravaged by the devastating war between the Empire and the Alliance. However, one nation remained unaffected by the chaos. The Kingdom of Alatane, Ward of the Orgus, looked destined to have its soil stained with the blood of battle. We've finally been called up. We're up against the Empire's main army. We are to eradicate every last Imperial who comes ashore. Keep focused. Come on, everyone! And now you will die. Do you really have such a yearning for war? I can't comprehend it. So then, what shall we do now? We're going to retake it. This is our chance while they're all assembled. We should send our best and crush them. That's right. All the more reason to avoid bloodshed. It also likely means that we're in danger. I suppose it is the only way for us to survive. We of the Guild of Menu Heroes Digest venture off upon our quest for many of places in the state of place trailers. We have now stumbled across the valley of Diofield Chronicles, to which I must say, as one who has ventured, made many adventures across Final Fantasy Tactics and Fire Emblem, and many of uh, turn based RPGs before, this one did leave not much of a mark. It has a mixture of anime style 3D models and more realistic environments, certainly an upgrade from other Final Fantasy types before it, but uh, you know, one must wonder why not just call it Final Fantasy Tactics? What makes this so unique that it has to be a brand new property itself? Though, of course, there's been many of talk of originality and traditions, and certainly this will continue on the debate. So, all I can say is, it's fine. We're almost done, but I am pretty tired. If the will to fight still lingers within you, then accept my offer and join me.
Ragnarok tears our world asunder. All we hold precious lies on the brink of annihilation. Become my tool of intervention and save this world from doom. Your efforts to remain undetected are lacking. Reveal yourself. Who are you? We are now at the next installment of the Valkyrie series, Valkyrie Elysium. Going for more of a combat system that's similar to Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, it has some fans worried that uh, it's abandoning its like RPG elements, but you're still able to recruit warriors, have some assist in your battle as well. I, honestly, I found this one to be a bit more interesting than the last one, simply because like, I don't know, I feel like we're focusing on a character more so, and granted, like some things we have seen in other Final Fantasy entries, but I guess the visuals I thought were pretty good, and I thought some of the attack mechanics I thought were interesting as well. I, I, I said, if, you, if I had to pick between one of these two recent Square Enix entries, I would go with this one very least we will see um I, I would say overall my thoughts for place and state of play is it's feeling like it's trending a lot of a lot of same grounds uh i again super happy that we got the tmnt collection definitely the trek to yomi is like the most exciting exo primal it's about dinosaurs and there's mechs that's a plus for me even though it probably has nothing to do with the dino crisis franchise oh god all right, that's my thoughts on uh, the PlayStation State of Play, but uh, don't go nowhere. I have one more PlayStation-related story to cover. Were you having fun with PlayStation State of Play? Did you find something good? Did you for a second forget all the terrible things that happened around the world? Well, here's a reminder how bad things are. Within PlayStation's own California offices... Allegedly. So in November 2021, a class action lawsuit was filed against PlayStation's uh, alleging pay discrepancy, wrongful termination, and other in instances of gender based discrimination. Again, at the California offices, where Sony tried to dismiss the whole thing, saying uh, that they failed to identify a single policy, practice, or procedure that allegedly formed the base of any widespread intentional discrimination or had a discriminatory impact on women. But of course, afterwards, several more women uh, had come out in uh and counter that claim saying no there's there's plenty of ex examples of us either unfairly treated or discriminated against so a letter one worker shared with female employees where she left the company in january saying repeated attempts to notify superiors about gender biases alleged discrimination against pregnant women and resistance from a senior man in hr to act on their accounts as well as the fact that one former employee has been among 11 women to quit in a four-month period for just one office. One former programmer wrote, I believe Sony is not equipped to appropriately handle toxic environments. So Polygon reports that a former Sony Interactive senior director, Marie Hamilton, had further testimonies. In, she uh, had said men at Sony would rank female employees by their hotness and pass around filthy jokes and images of women. She also described an instance where an engineer asked her not to wear skirts to work because it was distracting and alleged that male engineers went to strip clubs during lunch and shared porn. In another in incident, Ma Harrison said she required a private lactation room after having twins in 2005. She was required to use a storage room with a broken lock directly off the entrance lobby. Harrison wrote that she stopped breastfeeding early because it was not suitable under those conditions. Eight women's testimonies have been added to the original suit filed by Emma Majo or Maho 
in November 2021. Access says that yesterday's filing met a deadline for replies to Sony's attempt to drop the suit and that a subsequent hearing won't happen until next month at the earliest. It's just, I mean, it's sad that with the female workers at Sony and PlayStation are going through all this, but it is a bit ironic that all this information is coming out right after PlayStation stated play stunt. So, yeah. Keep all this in mind when you're all trying to hunt for a new PS5. See you later.